Okay, so who would like to wave a magic wand and have their house wired for ethernet? I'm sure a lot of you would. Okay, now by show of hands, who has a house that is wired with old coax cables back when cable TV was a thing? Probably most of you. If you're a cable TV cord cutter like me, then that old outdated coax cable is just sitting there in your walls doing nothing. But actually on the contrary, these cables can actually be used to upgrade our house to the modern era of ethernet. Now, there are two options that we can go with. We can either use the coax cable to pull through new ethernet into our walls. Now, if you're in a two-story house like I am, that's probably easier said than done. But we have a second option, and that is to set up a mocha network. Now, I'm not talking about a mocha like this one. I'm actually talking about a mocha like this one. This device right here allows us to utilize the coax cable in our walls for transferring data and then converting it to ethernet. It's actually pretty genius and easy to use. So let's dive into Mocha 2.5, explain a little bit more on how it works, and then answer some of the hot questions that I got on my last video talking about this subject. All right, I like visuals, so I'm gonna give you guys a top down on what this is gonna look like if it was in a wall. So we've got our cable modem right here. This is not my cable modem, but let's pretend this is the internet coming into the house. Cable goes out here and is going to come into our first Mocha connector right here. Now here is the cable that is inside my wall. This is going to be in my network closet. Let's say this is on the other side of my house in the living room. We are going to connect both of these devices together. On this side, I want to now plug something into it, something that needs to be connected to the internet. It could be a Wi-Fi mesh router if you want to set up a backhaul. Or for me, I'm just going to plug in a computer. So we'll get that plugged in there. Computer is now set up. The only thing that you're not seeing in this setup right here are all of the power plugs. So we've got additional power plugs that are gonna go into each one of these to get them lit up to take a look at the lighting, which we'll take a look at what those mean in a second. But as far as a top-down shot, this is essentially is what the setup is gonna look like. All right, now let's take a look at my setup. Luckily, I have coax cable all coming in here to the closet, which is also where the cable modem comes into. This is my AT&T gateway. What I have is internet is going in here and it is coming out here. So one of these plugs here, I think it's this one, is actually running up here and it is going to my main Wi-Fi router, which is this one right here. This is the Netgear Orbi. It is coming out of the back of here and it is running back down and going into my switch right here which then goes to all of the ethernet ports that I do have in my house. So luckily I am already set up for ethernet, but most likely you are not going to have that because we want to be using these cables right here. So you would essentially take this cable right here, plug it into the back of our modem that we saw up above. This would go into, or not the modem, into the router above. You would take that cable into the router this cable would then go into our Mocha device right here. So here's the Mocha device that we have. It is plugged in, ready to go. And then we have got our coax right here that is plugged into it. And then we're gonna to wanna to put another Mocha device on the other side. And that is going to essentially allow us to use our cabling right there. Now, a big question that I got in the last video is, do I need to have one of these devices on both ends of the cable to get it to work? Technically, yes, but you don't need to have one for one on both sides. And what I mean for that is that you don't need to have five different cables. I don't need to have five different devices on this end and then five other devices on the other end because what you can use is something like this. And this is a splitter. So this is a splitter this one is also by go coax we have the one coming in and then we have six others coming out because you can connect up to six devices per main mocha device so right here we have got our in that is going to this one which is then connecting to my wi-fi router this one is then going to three different devices that are out in my house so we're going to go ahead and take a look we've got bedroom two family room and bedroom three actually bedroom three we're not even using so we're going to go ahead and take a look at bedroom two which is my office and the family room and test out both of the connections to see what kind of speed we're getting out of this mocha 2.5 now a word from this video sponsor all right real talk i think i found the video doorbell it's the tp link tapo d225 and honestly it's kind of everything that i want in the doorbell but just in one device first of all the camera is super sharp like 2K resolution. 
You can see absolutely everything with this, even at nighttime. And as far as the field of view, you're getting 180 degrees. So if somebody drops off a package, you're actually going to see it. Oh, and when somebody rings it, it actually places a call to your phone, like rings like a phone call. So no more getting app notifications and trying to load up the app to talk to the person on the other line. You're gonna pick up an immediate phone call to be able to talk to them instantly. With the Tapo D225, you can actually do 24 seven recording if you hardwire it up. This is going to allow you to scroll through the entire day's footage of recordings. But if you don't wanna mess with wiring at all, it does have a built-in battery that does last eight months. The device is also waterproof with an IP66 rating, so you don't have to baby it. You can leave it outside in the rains, in the extreme thunderstorms, with the hail, it can handle it. Now it does come with a chime inside of the box as well as all of the mounting hardware and angle brackets if you do wanna get fancy with it. Anyway, if you are looking for a video doorbell, this is the one that I would tell my mom to get. It's got all of the high-end features without having an additional subscription fee. So if you wanna know more about the Tapo D225, I will leave links in the description. All right, let's head down to the living room where I've got the laptop all set up for us. We have got our Mocha device back here that has been running. This is plugged into the wall that's going behind the TV. We have our cable here coming out, going in and being plugged into our dongle right here for us to do a speed test. This dongle right here is a gigabit dongle. So even though our Mocha 2.5 back here can go at speeds of well, 2.5 gigs, we're only going to be able to get one gig out of it because our bottleneck right here is gonna be this adapter. So let's see, we have got 982 download speeds, upload speeds at 989. So pretty close, but that is a good test right there. We're also doing the test locally here on the NAS, so I'm not having to reach out to the internet and rely on any internet speeds. All of our testing is going to be done locally here on the NAS. So the next thing that I wanna do is let's head up to the office and test that speed because we should be getting a lot faster speed than what we're seeing here. All right, now let's test out our speed here in the office. Here is what my setup looks like in here. So we've got our Mocha 2.5 right in there. It is coming out of the wall right there going in. We've got our Cat8 cable plugged in to give us the best chance for the best speed. And now that is running all the way over to the back of the computer where we are going to go ahead and test our speeds right now. Okay, so we should be getting much faster speeds out of this test right here. I'm expecting to be about 2000 to about 2500 as far as speeds as we're getting. So it looks like our download speed is only capping off at about 2000. Okay, so we got 1999 for our download speeds and then our upload speeds are always higher. So every time I do a test, upload speeds are always higher. I'm not sure why that is. If you guys know, let me know in the description why my upload speeds are always higher than my download speeds. But we're getting a lot closer to that 2500. So my current setup right now is that I have got a 10 gig home network. So 10 gig switches, I've got a 10 gig on the Wi-Fi router, and then I've also got 10 gig here on the computer. So I definitely have the bandwidth. The only thing that is going to be holding me back is going to be that Mocha 2.5. So that should be capping off about 2.5, which is what we're seeing here for our upload speeds. Okay, now I do want to explain the lights that we're getting on here. So we see the first light here is going to be our Mocha light. Now to set these up, I just plugged them in. I didn't go through any configuration or setup or anything, literally just plugged them in and they found each other and communicated with each other. Now the next light there that you see is not on is the security light. You can set up encryption on here. There is a web portal that you can access and turn on encryption. I am not doing that, but you can do that. Next one is ethernet. So once you do get your ethernet, plugged in and that is up and running. You're gonna see your ethernet light and then they also have the power light right there. Now, another question that I get a lot is, what if I'm already using my coax for TV, cable TV, anything like that? There are other adapters that will actually have two coax ports on either end. It looks like Go Coax used to have that. I went on their website, I went on Amazon and I could not find it anywhere. It looked like it was an older version. Unfortunately, at least for this brand, they don't have that anymore, but it is an option. You're gonna look for two coax on either end here, and you will be able to continue to use that. Unfortunately, this brand just doesn't offer that. Okay, now the obvious benefit to Mocha is being able to have a ethernet connection all the way across your house. 
using those coax cables, whether you're plugging it into a computer or maybe even a TV to get functionality out of that. But there's also another use case that can be very beneficial to you. In the first episode of this networking series, which if you guys want to check out the series, I will leave a link in the description below. We talked about setting up a mesh Wi-Fi. Now with mesh Wi-Fi, you are going to be plugging one of these into your internet gateway to get internet to this thing to broadcast around your house. And then with the mesh, you're going to take another unit and put it somewhere in your house. Now these guys can connect to each other wirelessly. So they're going to get their connection. This one will get it from the main one right here and essentially re-amplify it to maybe an area of your house that has a dead zone. That is what mesh Wi-Fi is good for. But if you don't have these guys close enough together to get a good stable connection, this guy might be kind of weak or at least not as strong as it can be. So one good thing about this is if you have ethernet ports in your house, you can take ethernet cables and can actually connect these two together. Or now we can use mobile and take advantage of the coax running through our walls. So an ethernet cable out of the back of here that gets plugged into here will set up what's called a wired backhaul as opposed to a wireless backhaul, which essentially is what connects these devices together. Now a wired backhaul is going to be a lot more reliable and give you far more speeds than it is for the wireless backhaul. So I definitely recommend setting that up if you have the option. So in the last video, I talked about mesh Wi-Fi and what all of the different terminology was and how how to essentially shop for one that is best for you. And in the next video of this series, I'm actually going to give you some recommendations of my own. I'm gonna break it up into three different tiers. We're gonna go budget friendly, best bang for the buck, and then ridiculous speed, but also ridiculous price. So be sure to stay tuned for that one. If you guys need help setting up your home network, I did a full video on that from everything that you need and how to set it all up. I will leave a link for that video right over here. If this video was helpful, give it a thumbs up. Let me know that you liked it. As always, don't forget to subscribe for more content like this. And I'll see you guys in the next video.